What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. This time we're gonna take a look at Lightroom and Lightroom is something that I use every single day and I'm, I'm not kidding, I use it a lot. And I'm not using it on my PC, I'm using it on my iPad because the iPad's Lightroom version is still very, very powerful. And um, in this video, we're also gonna take a look at how you can heal your image in Lightroom, how you save it, how you export it in the, to get the best quality because by default, it's set to 80% quality. We're also gonna take a look at how you can add additional light, like you can fake that you have light on your photo, if, you, if that makes sense. And we're gonna take a look at that in this tutorial. And we're gonna take this photo right here and we're gonna turn it into a, this photo. This is a photo that I used for my thumbnail on the uh, Sony A7 III when I got that camera as well, my studio tour type of, yeah, it's it's down in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, so that is what we're going to take a look at in, uh, in this tutorial. And also if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that. That would be highly appreciated. So with that said, uh, let's jump over to uh, the iPad and Lightroom and create some uh, proper dope thumbnail photos from uh, some uh, other photos. <laughs> yeah. So once we get over to the iPad and we have the photo that we want to import over to Lightroom, we can simply tap on the share button here and then select Lightroom and then launch Lightroom now. That will open up the photo inside of Lightroom. And the way that we're gonna adjust this image now is the way that I do it on all my thumbnails as well. So if you're interested in learning how I edit my thumbnails, uh, you can follow through the procedure in this tutorial. So the first thing you wanna do once you open up Lightroom and uh, if you used it for a couple of times but you haven't changed the settings or if you simply just downloaded Lightroom and you want to edit videos, the first thing you need to do is to go over to the share button. Under the uh, export to camera roll and export to files, depending on where you want to save this, if you want to save it to files folder or directly over to an SSD disk, you choose the export to files and you change the settings there. But we're gonna go over to export to camera roll and you see the settings here on the right side, those two dots here. So we're gonna tap on that. And by default, this is set to JPEG, largest available dimensions and 80% of image quality. So we're gonna change the image quality to 100. And once we're done with that, we are basically done with the, the most important part when it comes to the quality and the outcome of our photo. So now we're gonna go on and color grade this and make it more appealing as a thumbnail for our YouTube videos. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to go over to uh, effects. And under effects, you have clarity and texture. Texture is bringing more like taking the pixels and giving them more clarity in some way, uh, each individual pixel. And the clarity is taking the entire, like entire frame of the photo. So what I usually do is to take the clarity up to around 80 and the texture, it depends on how much lighting I have in the background. The more lighting you have in the background, the grainier and more washed out the colors will be. Uh, it can be hard to see for you up there, but um, on the right side here, you can see that it's getting a little bit more grainier. So we're gonna take this and just bump it up to somewhere around 30 to begin with. And you can see now that the photo got a lot better and more attractive right away. This is before and this is after. So now we're gonna move over to the um, light section here. And I'm gonna start by adding a simple tiny S curve, just like this. Maybe take the shadows a little bit back to there and the highlights a little bit up, somewhere like that. So now before and after. The next thing we're gonna do is to go over to the uh, shadows. We're gonna bring the shadows all the way up to 100 and we're gonna take the whites all the way down and the black all the way up if, uh, if you can do that. If you can't do that, just play around with it a tiny bit until you see that you have an attractive look to your image. 
Now once we've done that, you can choose if you want to add more contrast or decrease the contrast. I think we're going to add a little bit of contrast to this. So here is before and here is after. So once we've done that, we can go over to color and we can go over to the vibrance versus the saturation. So the, the way that this works is saturation is bringing more color to the entire photo. And it uh, doesn't matter how desaturated the colors are, the saturation will bump up the, the colors of every single thing which is in the photo. Now the vibrance works as this. If you have parts which is less saturated, you can increase the saturation and the color of those parts by choosing the vibrance and increasing that. So if we take the vibrance up to let's say 30, now you can see that we have more colors to the parts which is not that saturated. And if we remove this and take the saturation up to 30, you can see that there's more colors to the entire image. So the way that I usually do this is to take the saturation a tiny bit down and I take the vibrance and push up. By doing that, I bring more of the colors in the background out to the image as well. So here is before and here is after. So now let's go over to the color wheel here. And this is the color mix and you have all the colors here and you have the hue, saturation and luminance. And luminance works like this. You can add more shadows and, and more darkness into your color, which you have selected here, or you can add more light to that color. So if you take a look here and here, you will see that it's now very, very like destroyed. It's a lot of artifacts going on here. And if you take it to the left, it's less but you can also see here on the parts of the color, which is not like fully colored. Like, yeah, you, you probably know <laughs> what I mean. Um, but this one we can usually, we keep the luminance at zero. And in some cases we take it down just a tiny bit. And here is where you select the color of the main color. So if we selected the red, we can manipulate the color red to uh, looks like something else. So if we want it to be pink, we can choose pink, or if we want it to be yellow greenish, we can do that as well. I'm gonna take this a little bit towards the red side, like minus 10. And you do the exact, exact same thing with the remaining colors as well. If you want the orange to be more yellow or reddish, you can, you can do that. You can also add saturation to it, and you can bring the luminance down if you feel like you need to do that. So now that we did the color adjustment to the uh, footage here as well, we can go back to effects and we can play around with the texture here to see if that has any impact on our total image or if we want to decrease it or increase it. The clarity I usually leave at around 80. You can also take this down to around 70 or you can remove it completely. So now we, let's take a look with uh, no clarity and texture applied. Then it looks like this. And if we take this up to 80-ish, you can see the image is getting a lot crispier and more attractive. So now let's take a look before and after. And you can especially see here around the lens that we got more a, cr a crispier look to the lens as well. So now the way that you export this, and um, let's see, this is the type of photos that you uh, you take a lot. And you, you always have the same backlight and uh, you have things in the foreground with some, somehow the similar lighting to the, um, to the object or whatever you are taking photos of. Uh, you can save this as a preset. And to save this as a preset, you go over to the uh, three buttons here and you create a preset. Make sure that everything that you have uh, used is selected. You can also get an indication here on the right side. So effects, six out of six, colors, four out of four, light, seven out of seven, and so on. So we can just call this um, tutorial and a Lightroom, done, and save. So now that you save this as a preset, you can uh, do the final tweaking to the image because you want to save this as a preset before you start healing the image. 
and uh, let's first start healing the image. Uh, so by healing the image, and what I mean is to remove some of the dust which is on, for example, the lens. So this is not really a good example of that because uh, it's not really that much dusty around here, but we have some dust here on the top of the lens as you see here. So what you do is you zoom into your footage or your image like this, and you see the healing tool up here. You select that, and you can select like the size and the feather and the opacity. Usually I'll leave this at default. So now that you selected that healing tool, you can simply tap on the parts which you want to heal. So we have one here, I'm gonna tap on that. And you see it tries to match the healing here, but it didn't really work. So we're gonna try one more time. And uh, I think the brush is a little bit too big, so we're gonna scale it down, something like that. So now let's try again, and we heal that part. We can go over here and we can try to heal this part. And we have some parts over here, which we can try to heal. And you can see how good this is actually working. Keep in mind that this is just on the iPad and if you used uh, this on your uh, computer, it would probably heal a lot better than it does here on the, uh, on the iPad. Another thing you can do as well, if you want to heal bigger areas, you can simply just draw like this and hope for the best result. So this is not looking great at all. Uh, so I think we have to delete that part and uh, let's see if we can clean up some more here. Something like that. So now we have a before and after. So once you finished up adjusting your image here, and let's say that you don't have any backlight like I have here. I'm using the Philips Hue, which is the uh, blue here, and here we have uh, the Philips Hue LED strip, and here we have some IKEA LED bulbs as well. So let's say you don't have any of that, and you want to have some color in your photo as well to make it a little bit more appealing, and you want to illustrate that the color is coming from some somewhere around the uh, the edge here um, from each one of the corners or anything like that then you go over to the uh, circle here which is underneath the healing tool you tap on that one time and you see a plus appears up here so you tap on that and you can select if you want a round brush or a brush where you draw yourself which is the first one a circular brush which is like this and uh, you can also choose if you want something like a square like this. This is the one that I usually used before I got my uh, backlight. So now we have selected the area. I'm gonna show you one more time. You select the plus and you select the one you want and you tap and drag on your screen. So this is the one I want now. I want you to have some a different color here on the left hand side of the camera. So I'm gonna drag this up to somewhere like that. Then I'm gonna go over to color and down to the color panel down here and I can select a different color. So let's say I want to have more blue to this. I'm gonna drag this up to blue, somewhere like that. And I can now drag this to add more blue to the uh, image. I can also stretch this in to make the blue harder, something like that. You have, feels like you have some blue light coming underneath from around here and then underneath the camera and uh, you get the blue color underneath your lens as well and at the bottom of your camera. You can also adjust the uh, white balance of this to make it more blue and uh, more yellowish. And you can also change the saturation to uh, be more saturated and more desaturated. And this kind of works in the opposite way. So more saturation fades it out and less saturation is giving it more color. So we can take the temperature here down a little bit instead. Perfect. So now let's take a look at before and after. And usually what I also do as well is to take this over to Affinity Photo and then I add my text inside of Affinity Photo. I can show you one example. And um, 
let's take uh, this uh, photo here and we're going to choose export to camera roll. And if we go over to our camera roll here, you see that you have the photo. So now let's go over to affinity photo. And once we have this imported, we're going to go straight over to the uh, three dots here, over to place and place from photos. So once you found the uh, light leaks here or the camera lights here, you can select the one you want. Let's select this. Gonna tap one time on the screen so it will appear. You can drag this out. Make sure that this is selected and go over to the layers. Tap on the three dots and choose a blending mode screen or lighten screen. So now we're going to take this and we're going to add it to the lightest part of the lens, which is here. Once we've done that, we can export this to our photos app. Make sure that everything is set to PNG. And once the generating export is complete, we can tap on share and save image. Now that the image is saved, we can go over to our photos app and you see that we have the finished photo. So there you have the super easy way of using Lightroom to spice up your footage, to add that fake kind of color underneath something like we did with the lens on this camera as well. It's really, really those small parts you can do to increase the quality and the uh, get b better photo appearance appeal appearance i don't know if that's a word but to get better photos uh, which is more appealing it's just a few simple steps and it's not really that difficult it's just that you you need to practice how to use them so you get it into your workflow so you always remember to use them to spice up your video photo sorry and you can take this over to affinity photo like we did and you can work on the the photo there you can add some like 3d uh, kind of type of a look if you want to do that you, you can just play around in affinity photo to to uh, create something really really unique to you you can or you can just not play around and just do it. Just do it, just get in there and just edit the photo like a professional. So that's it for this tutorial as well. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if this is completely new for you and you learned something or that you have any things that I didn't mention that you think is crucial to using Lightroom. So with that said, thanks for watching and of course, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video.